Hello and welcome to Janome Stitch Club UK. My name is Julia and I'm one of the educators here in the UK and the idea of this YouTube club is to basically look at some more of the features, feet, stitches etc. The things that you can do with your Janome sewing machines and uh, this month I've decided we're going to look at one of the most exciting feet although there are a choice of feet which I will explain later so that we can actually look at the technique of free motion embroidery and by that I mean doing things like this where you're actually decorating you're actually embroidering your your painting this is thread painting and you'll often see it mentioned as thread painting where you're actually using the machine in a much more um, fluid and creative way and you there's a technique for doing it some of you may have already tried it um, some of you may have never tried this at all but it is such a fun technique to have a go at so you can get effects like this or um, this made me laugh because it's it's summer oh isn't that a lovely thought um sketchy sketchiness uh paintingness things little projects i've just been working on some little um tags and, and stuff for christmas using up your scraps it's such a great form but you do need a special foot to do it and this is this is it the free motion foot and there are a couple of different types available and that's what i really wanted to go through just so so even if you have done this before i'm going through the different types of feet so that you can see if there perhaps is something if you love it there's something that's actually going to really help you on your way and i'm going to say now i am not an expert at this i'm going to put links below because there are a couple of videos on our youtube channel which feature experts um artists basically who do the most wonderful stuff um so i'm giving you the basics here the basic grounding but all i can say is it's a such a fun technique to try and if you've never had a go then uh, this is how you go about it so why don't we turn around have a little look at the feet first and how you set your machine up so let's take a little look at the feet options that you've got it's really really important that you get the right foot for your machine what the foot's actually going to do is it's going to show you exactly where the needle is. So just as a safety feature, number one. Um, but also, although it doesn't actually hold the material down, it does form some kind of, uh, it does hold stuff out of the way. I'll show you a bit more about that when I actually get on the machine. So the, the one that most machines you'll see, the most common one, is what's known as the hopping foot. And this has this kind of, little uh, spring on it so it has this kind of hopping action now I've got two here because I wanted you to see the difference this is a low shank this is a high shank okay and it's really really important that you get the right one to fit your machine generally speaking and there are a couple of uh, uh, different ones but I'll go into that uh, the low shank is going to be for a seven millimeter machine in other words your top stitch width setting would be seven millimeters okay this one the high shank is usually for the nine millimeter machines that have got so usually the ones that have got the slightly bigger throat space for example so that's the first thing you need to find out so if you are buying one make sure that you're getting the right one any nine millimeter feet have actually got it written on the card okay uh, if in doubt, I'm going to put a link down below in the description, uh, which will take you to the page, which will show you what category your machine is. And from that, you'll be able to work out exactly which foot is the right one for you. OK, so as I say, that that is the most basic one. OK, you can then go on to this one, which is this set here, the convertible free motion quilting foot set. Now, this is a more expensive beast, but it does come with, look, all these various attachments. And the biggest difference with this one is that the whole thing is metal if you're using these ones. You also have these slightly wider 
plates here and what they can do is this one here has got the measurements on so if you're free motion quilting and you want to do echo quilting say an eighth or quarter of an inch around a shape maybe an applique or something that's brilliant for that um, and then this this clear one as well um, with no markings well there are markings if you wanted to but they're not as clear obviously because they're not in red but this I think is really good especially if you're working um, with very mixed textiles I think this is a good one for that because it does tend to hold everything down so say you're using uh, a lot of wools and um, little felt wools and things like that so maybe some slightly more unusual textiles to build up a picture these will hold them a little bit flatter so they won't catch quite so much okay but the biggest difference with this is that this is removable there's a little screw down the bottom here which means that you can swap over and put any of these different um, feet on so you've got an open toe closed toe and as i say these two here as well so that's that there's a little screw in there which i've oh no i thought i'd lost it crikey another little screw there we go i put it on white deliberately so i'd be able to find everything i'm going to screw that back in before i do lose it the other thing is there's a screw here so that what that does is it will actually lower or raise the level of the foot when we're actually on the machine you'll see what i mean because the idea of using these feet is to get it you want it to skim over the top. You want to be able to move your fabric underneath because you are in charge of moving the fabric. And sometimes you don't want the distance to be too far because there's too much spring and sometimes it will lift the fabric and the fabric kind of jumps almost as you're going as well. I'll, like I say, when we get this on the machine, I'll actually show you a little bit more of, of how that works. So this tends to be one, this is a real favourite, this foot. Um, most of the textile artists that we work with at Janome, they would be using this foot, to be honest, um, because they love the fact that they can have, number one, they can have all these different options, but also that they can raise and lower it. So for ex uh, the simplest example is if I'm doing thread painting, I tend to be on quite um, a thin layer of fabric because i'm going to build up the layers so i would actually have it lower towards that layer if i'm doing free motion quilting however my sandwich is going to be much thicker so i might want to lift it a little bit it's going to depend on the batting that i use so as i say this one gives you lots more options okay the other thing that you might have um, I've got the Atelier here, the Atelier 9, and it's the same for the 7 and the 9450 and the 9480. You get these lovely little um, Q feet. Um, and again, there's a, a an open toe and a closed toe version. What I love about these is there is no bounce because these will actually clip on to your actual ankle that is on. So I love this, especially if I'm doing decorative work where I want to work with uh, decorative stitches as well as free motion because it's so easy to chop and change between the feet. So I can put my regular zigzag foot on or my open toe applique and then I can put on my free motion foot as well. So again, there's choices there and it's one of those things where you will find one that actually works better for you but as i say this is probably going to be the one that most people would start on okay so let's start with the hopping foot as i say that's the one most obvious one that people have probably got in fact if you've got a quilting kit with your machine you would probably have this in here so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to take off the ankle Okay, so I'm going to unscrew that and then I'm going to leave that screw a couple of little turns in there because this is the bit that then hangs over the screw. Okay, and then tighten it up. And what is very, very important with feet like this is don't just tighten it up by hand. Go in and tighten it 
a couple of turns with your screwdriver as well the action of this foot there's going to be quite a lot of bouncing up and down etc it's going to work quite hard so you don't want it it loosening up as you're working okay and then do put this somewhere safe um ask ask me how, why i would say that because i've done that so many times where i haven't and then you know hours later i'm searching for it because obviously i can't use any of my other feet unless i've got that ankle so i'm going to put it in there so it's nice and safe so the first thing that I want you to notice is where it's sitting and it is actually sitting above here. These are the feed dogs, the teeth that feed the fabric through. Okay, and I'm going to disengage those. I'm gonna drop those. Now on your machine, on this, the Atelier, there is actually a button to the side and I've just clicked that over and they've dropped on a lot of machines. If you slide out, your table here there will be a button at the back there it will be in your instruction book okay and once you slide that across look those teeth have gone down which now means that it, I've got this movement okay now I'm going to show you this is press a foot down this is press a foot up so as you can see very little difference here in fact this there's a slight difference on this model of machine because it's high shank. So you end up, you have got a double lift on this machine. But on my other machine, the 5270, for example, when I actually put that presser foot down, there's hardly any difference at all. And it doesn't look like the presser foot is down. That is key number one. Always put the presser foot down. Even though it doesn't look like it's down, it's still actually doing a job because what it's done is it's engaged your tension discs up the top. And if you don't engage those tension discs, you are going to end up with a massive old bird's nest on the underneath. And that's no fun for anybody. So the next thing that you need to do is I can take my stitch length down to zero. OK, as I say, I'm on the Atelier, so it's automatically done it for me because there is no stitch length. The stitch length now is you. You are actually deciding how long those stitches are. So I've taken the stitch length down. I've dropped the feed dogs and my presser foot is lowered. OK, I've got a size 14 needle. I tend to prefer a size 14 needle when I'm doing this kind of work. Um, I've got a purple tip in actually which I like for this and the first thing I want to do now that's a lot of firsts isn't it but anyway I'm gonna pull that bobbin thread up to the top okay so that was just a needle up down so that I know exactly where both of those threads are and then I'm going to put my needle back down again and I would always say start with your needle down the first thing that happens if you've never done this before is it's going to make you jump. I call this one of those prickly under the armpit techniques. When you very first start, it's not it's so different to how you generally would sew that it does kind of take you a little bit by surprise. OK, I'm going to keep my stitch speed on um, because it's computerized. I'm going to keep that fairly low to start with so that I can go slowly. And I'm now going to start sewing. And what I want to do is I want to keep the movement of my hands quite smooth. Generally, I would be going like the clappers with the needle. But because we're starting, I'm going to keep that medium speed so that it's not going to panic. You don't want to panic. That I think that's the thing. So start slow and you'll soon find that it is actually easier to do when you're going a little bit faster. But as I say, when you first start, and either hold it down and move like this, or if you're on a smaller project, sometimes I'll actually hold the side of the project like this. So once we um, start sewing, and I've just realized that on this machine, I have to tell it that I'm doing free motion as well. There we go. Okay, so now he knows. Okay, so this is, as I say, the key here is, can you see, until I start moving, the stitching won't start. And the faster, if I get this out of the way, the 
the quicker I move the top, the longer those stitches will be. If I keep it nice and neat, I will have teeny tiny stitches. But you notice I can go forwards, backwards, round, sideways. And that's the joy of it, in that you can actually, this feels so slow to me, I don't normally stitch this slow, but you can actually just make all of those movements. And you can stop whenever you like and readjust. So if you feel like you're sort of heading off in the wrong direction or you can't get to where you want to be, just remember, it's a bit like a car, take your foot off the gas and it will stop, okay? So I'm now going to take that speed up just so that I can speed up a little bit. I think one of the good things to start with is to maybe do your name. It's all about muscle memory, this, and this is what I mean about you practicing so that you can actually practice getting it smooth. And getting it the smoother you get it the better the finish on the underneath now you'll notice I've got I've just put a piece of um, felt backing on under here and I very rarely I rarely would just use one layer of fabric it's like everything else we do it's all about stabilizing that fabric um, so as I say I would always put something underneath it and not just go on to one layer of fabric um, I think a little bit of interfacing iron-on interfacing for example um, if I'm doing it uh, thread painting, I would probably just have iron on interfacing because I wouldn't want anything quite this thick. Um, and when I say thread painting, what I mean by that is instead of shapes, you're actually filling. So a little bit like if you had a pencil and you were just, um, let me get a pencil. If you had a pencil and you were just doing this, okay because this needle is replacing the pencil or the pen. This is your paper, but what you're doing is you're moving the paper instead of the pen or the pencil. Okay, so having had a quick look at, at those, those basics, and like I say, the key things to remember are definitely drop your feed dogs, make sure your presser foot is down, OK, and bring that bobbin thread up to the top so that you know where both of those threads are and start with your needle down so that the first thing it does isn't jump and make you jump because then you take your foot off the gas, don't you? Um, basically, when you're doing stuff like that. So I'm going to move on to just show you a little project to look at. And when I say project, I'm not talking anything sort of um, major this week. This is the time of year, frankly, when if I get the opportunity to head off into my sewing room, I start playing around. I think it's quite nice, especially if you've had a really busy run into Christmas of making quilts and things like that. So here I've just cut some basic flower, very basic flower shapes. And you can draw a little line for you to follow to start with if you want to entirely up to you um, sometimes when you start it's easier sometimes it's not sometimes it depends on how good you are at drawing I think I think that's the key with this I've actually put on the convertible one here which is my my sort of favorite one to use for this and this is I wanted to show you what I meant about this foot so I don't know if you can see, there's actually very little gap under here, but I can, can you see that going up? Look, this is what I mean about you getting it to exactly the level, if I take the needle out, that you want, so that you're just barely skimming across the top. And I do think sometimes that does make for a much, much easier life. Now I've brought up my bobbin thread and I'm going to start with the needle down. And I'm actually going to take that back down again because I want it to be a little bit closer to here. So if you're working on a project where you're doing quite a lot of stitching, um, for example, thread, I'm talking about something like this where I'm building up 
I think you can see I'm building up the layers of stitching so it's almost like I'm sketching across the top like this okay I've put the layers of fabric underneath here applique it looks very basic to start with and then I stitch over the top and I build up the colors and the layers so as I'm building up those layers as it's maybe getting thicker I can then lift that foot very slightly with each layer hopefully that makes sense so having got that foot on as I say I can go a, I'm going to go a little bit slower but as you can see I can follow that line around you can see it's going to be quite wiggly and this is what I mean about speed because if I now up the speed can you see how much smoother those lines start to get These sorts of flowers, basic shapes, I think are a really good place to start. It's normally what I would do with um, beginners, to be honest, is just to get them in the habit because it really is such a different technique if you've never done it before. Sorry, I'm going to have to kind of shout. It's not quite a technique, as you can tell. But you can stop and start, nothing to say you can't. What I would say though is trim your threads as you go because otherwise they will get caught under what you're doing. So on here I've done slightly looser, um, bigger swirls. I've tried to do the first one so that it's actually going to hold the fabric down and then the others are purely just for effect but it does give quite a nice uh, modern effect I think, um, more of a print effect doesn't it? So, as I say, if we were looking at something like this, though, let me change the thread over and I'll show you a bit more about thread painting, where I've started with the thread painting. So, as I say, you'll start to see, because this is a much brighter colour. Hopefully you can see, can you see where it's really starting to build up, isn't it? And so you can see the sort of, here we go, this is with nothing, this is just with the red. And then when you put another colour in, and then you could go in with black again. And if you were doing, say you were doing this on a jacket, um, like a denim jacket or some jeans or something like that as a fancy patch, if you needed a repair job, there's nothing to stop you here going in with some um, beading or something like that which would look fantastic wouldn't it so that is let me show you some samples actually finished samples of thread painting so here's the robin and as you can see i've cut him out because what you do find is if you're doing something like this you'll find that the more you work it the fabric i think you can probably see a little bit here the fabric will start to pucker so very often I'll actually work on something, then cut it out, and then, look, this is the underneath, and then I could actually stitch it onto another background and just go around the edges to stitch them in place, which means I could put them on a much more exciting background. So I'll often work just on calico or cotton or something very basic, um, and then it will go on to something a little bit more exciting in the background. This one here, this is a prime example of, you know, if you can't draw, because this starts off like this. So those flowers that I showed you earlier, um, I've just drawn some basic uh, leaves and things that I can then go in and do and then start doing the thread painting, the detail. And in here, you'll notice I've used greys and that sort of tealy color as well and browns. So you're using your threads as your color palette. Um, and again, if you look at the underneath, you can see the amount of sort of working that it takes to do this. 
but it's great great fun to do definitely great fun to do and the joy of it is then you can just stick it in a frame and that's it job done but as I say if this has always worried you thinking I can't draw then um, this is the way to go just and the more you practice it the easier you will find it because it is definitely it's not about the tension on the machine I find very often with this um, it's about the tension of you it's it's finding the comfortable seat I tend to sit up higher when I'm doing this so that I'm I'm actually looking down on my work almost and I do that for free motion quilting as well because I think that by sitting up higher you tend to not hunch your shoulders quite so much it's much better for your posture um, but as I say definitely a fun fun thing to try and the other thing that I do tend to do quite a lot at this I tend to do it in Twixmas to be honest is I will do sort of prepare things like my little cards and stuff for next Christmas um so he's just literally been stitched round look nice and easy um stuff like this these little um tags for example cut them out stick them on and then just go for it over the top with a little bit of free motion so it's just quite as i say quite a good little palette cleanser but if you haven't had a go of it yet then maybe it should be your new year's resolution um start the year with a new a new skill so to quickly go through the feet these little q feet that come with the as i say the atelier seven nine um, 9450, 9480, M7, oh gosh, uh, M8, probably more than that, but if you've got them, you'll know because they will have come with the machine. So, as I said to you, the reason I love these is because this is the basic foot, okay? So, the ankle where all of my presser feet will go, and they have one bar on. And then I can drop that down and there we go, my zigzag foot is on, okay? If I want to now change that out, this has two bars. So I'm going to clip the back bar on, hold it on the side and then drop my presser foot and there, that's clipped on. So this is why I like it because it means that I can go between the two feet quite easily so if i'm doing work where i'm using like when i did the seascape and i was using quite a lot of the decorative stitches if i then wanted to go in with some free motion stitching it's quite easy to chop and change between the two without having to get a screwdriver out every time um so i i love that about it there's also absolutely no bounce because there is no spring on this one so i do like this for free motion quilting as well uh, the thing you do need to remember is that when you go into your screen for free, so if I come back into the, I'm going to go back into the t-shirt settings, I'm going into quilting, free quilting, and then straight stitch one is the one that you use with the hopping feet, the, uh, the one that comes with, or the convertible, straight stitch two is the one that you need for this, okay? And what it will have done is change the settings on the machine so that it will work nicely with that. So I've now got this little one. I've done the usual thing of needle up down so I can bring up the bobbin thread. So just to show the sort of that as a, a foot as well. And as I say, it's very smooth, very smooth. So I, I do like this one a lot, actually, um, particularly on uh, free motion quilting. I must say I, I, I'm very fond of that, especially the noodly aspects of it. The final thing I want to say, though, and I do get <laughs> get asked this a lot, 
people will come and say, I, my machine's broken, it's broken, it won't work, it won't work. When you finish doing your free motion, obviously you're going to change your foot, whatever foot you've got on, etc. The key thing to do is to bring those feed dogs back up. Now, if I just push my button at the side, you'll notice nothing's happened, okay? It will not happen until I put my presser foot down, even with, I'm doing it with no presser foot on so you can actually see, and then I'm just going to take one stitch, so I'm just going to do needle up, down, and can you see, here they are, on um, some machines, my older machine, you can literally hear them clunk back into place. Um, but you do need to do that. Press a foot down, take one stitch to get those feed dogs back up. Your machine is not broken. It just hasn't gone through the full process. Okay, so don't, don't panic. Don't panic. Just take that first stitch and you'll see they'll come up into place. Okay. So there you have it. I've just literally skimmed through what is a massive topic. But I'm hoping that um at least there's the information there for the feet etc that you're going to find useful any questions etc please do pop them in the comments below and i will get back to you and i'm hoping that you've had a lovely holiday season and um we'll be doing much more fun stuff next year as well so see you next year <laughs>